Hello friends! Before we jump into today's video, I have a couple quick announcements for you. First of all, hello to all of my new people. It's so lovely to have you. Second of all, uh, custom pet portraits are now available on the shop on Canvas in four different sizes. If you are interested in getting a custom pet portrait and you want a size that is not listed on the shop, please just send me a message. Third of all, if you follow me on TikTok, you will have seen the Fur Baby Fund. This is something I'm doing right now in order to gift pet portraits to people to immortalize their fur babies. So basically how this works is I started a giveaway where I asked people to send me pictures of their beloved pets and I would choose one to paint for free in oil painting. I chose the giveaway winner recently, but in doing this giveaway, I realized that there were so many amazing stories and beautiful pets that I wanted to paint. So I asked TikTok if people could Venmo me $1 and help support the gifting of some of these portraits to these people and some really amazing pets, some really amazing stories. If you want to send me a picture of your pet, please do so. You can DM me on Instagram at Toxic Vinyl Co. or at Abigail Faith Co. Um, if you are interested in purchasing a pet custom, you can find them on my Etsy shop at Toxic Vinyl Co. and absolutely follow along all the painting will be posted on TikTok. My Venmo will be linked down below and if you're interested in donating this is a really cool project I think and I've been really blown away by the support. So today's video is another vinyl record related video. Today we're going to be following a oil painting tutorial on a vinyl record. For those of you who saw my gouache video, I have been testing out different mediums on vinyl records as canvases, as that is what I primarily sell in my shop. So basically what I have here before we get started is a primed vinyl record. This has a Mod Podge underneath, um, which is what I do with all my records, and then an acrylic gesso on top. Um, this is how people prime wood boards or other things they do oil paintings on. So this is going to be another time-lapse voiceover video for you guys to see how this goes. Canvases are expensive and a lot of people like exploring different surfaces for mediums. So I thought we would try this. Um, you can buy vinyl records really, really cheap at thrift stores. You can get uh, damaged vinyl records donated from record shops um, or places like that. You can find them on eBay, all kinds of things. People get rid of their scratched vinyl records for crafting purposes. And so if you're someone who doesn't want to be spending the money for canvases because they are quite pricey, um, I can get a set of 10 vinyl records for 95 cents at certain places. And so, you know, that ends up being less than 10 cents per record for this canvas. So if this works, this is something you guys can consider using. Let's get started. All right, you guys, so I am filming this voiceover a couple weeks after completing this piece. So we're gonna talk about how this went and also some of the things I've learned since and some of the mistakes I made so that this can be an educational video for you. What you're seeing here is the acrylic underpainting. I just mixed up some brown and orange for this, but traditionally people use a burnt sienna color. Um, I didn't have that, so I mixed my own. And then I'm just sort of blocking in where I want things to be. And this only takes about five minutes to dry and gives you a nice sort of tone to your painting. Now, while I mix up, these colors let me talk about the mistake I made right at the beginning of this process and if you're gonna try this this is important information for you to have so I put one coat of acrylic gesso on this record before I started and in my research since I've realized that if you are going to paint any surface that is not traditionally meant for oil painting um, that's not canvas or linen or something like that, you have to put at least three coats of primer. And so I believe that was the error that caused some of these issues I'm about to talk about. So if you try this, make sure you prime properly and look up how to do that. If you have questions, Google and YouTube are your best references and sources of information for that. So what I learned right away is that I could not use the techniques that I use on a regular canvas. Canvas is slightly absorbent, which can be very helpful for oil painting. I have this little canister next to me on my right that has my paint thinner in it. And normally I have a little bit of paint thinner on my brush or I mix up a little bit with my paints. And in this first coat that I was doing, I realized that it was so transparent. I mean, there's just no absorbency happening. It's just sitting on top. It was sort of dripping a little bit and it just wasn't working so I ended up having to use oil paint straight from the tube which some artists do but it is not traditionally recommended normally I'm mixing with a little bit of linseed oil I've recently started using liquid and I couldn't do any of that for this it was just straight oil paint 
It's really hard to see in this video, but I could see the lines of the acrylic painting underneath and of the gesso underneath that. I was having a hard time really feeling like I had coverage unless I used straight oil paint. Now you can see in the video on the left that I'm following, I didn't follow this exactly, but I used it as sort of a color reference and idea guide. She has very defined clouds, um, if you're looking at that clip on the left, and I was unable to do that with, I don't know if it's the brushes I had, I have a feeling it's the way I prepped my canvas, but I was just completely unable to make the definition of those clouds, and I had to do three coats on this painting of oils to feel like I had any coverage at all, and again, that's three coats of just straight oil paint. Now, I do want to point out right here in this clip, you're watching me use a little makeup brush. I paused partway through this, and I did some research because I was having trouble blending with the brushes I had on this surface, and one of the things I found is that a lot of artists like using makeup brushes. I've been doing this ever since this video and I actually really do recommend it. I had to sacrifice one of my little blending brushes for this, but it has been a wonderful painting tool in both oils and acrylics since I filmed this, so that's something I recommend you look into, especially if you're doing skies or clouds or things that require a lot of blending. This was really helpful to me. So this is just the first coat we're seeing here, and I sort of gave up on these clouds partway through. I thought I'm going to go back and fix that later and work on that later. Now in an ideal world, and you'll know this if you've done oils before, you wanna let this coat dry. This would be a good place for me to walk away, let this dry for a day or two, and come back and keep working on it. However, I was having so much frustration with the painting at this point that I knew if I walked away from it, I was not going to return to the project. I am um, a little ADHD. I don't like not being good at things as I'm sure some of you guys can relate to. And so I was just like, I have to finish this in one go or it's never gonna get done. So I pushed through. I will say that the total project for this only took me about three and a half hours, which is actually pretty good for a completed painting. So I did end up being, being kind of impressed with that. Granted, I was following a tutorial and, and things like that, which make it a little bit easier. But this is me finishing up the first coat getting the sort of general idea in there. So the issue with oils, if you are going to work, um, what they refer to as wet on wet, although that doesn't apply as much here because I was using sort of straight oil and not mixing it with other things, but um, the issue is that you're picking up the colors underneath. So I... When I go back and work on these clouds in a minute, you're gonna see that I cannot create that definition I'm looking for because anywhere that I put down a new color, I'm picking up the color underneath it and it gets muddy and it gets brown, especially these colors I'm working with, orange and purple. If you have ever worked with orange and purple, you mix those up, you're gonna get brown tones. And I didn't want to lose the vibrancy of the painting. And so what you're gonna see in a minute is that I ended up giving up on the idea of having defined clouds and I blended them uh, to be sort of a wispy cloud look, which I'm actually happy at looking back on it. Uh, it also means that, you know, I wasn't, I didn't end up with a carbon copy of this tutorial because I didn't want a carbon copy of the tutorial. So that's another way that I was able to make this my own, but it was purely circumstantial that I was unable to create the look I was going for with, you know, the way that I, as I said, the way my canvas was. So here's my third coat attempt. I was using my palette knife to just lay out the colors, hoping to get them on there kind of thick so I could cover up those lines I'm seeing underneath. And, um, and then you'll watch me start blending them out. So I did end up yesterday actually putting a coat of gloss varnish on this. And I wasn't sure if that was gonna work either, but it actually did, it looks pretty good. One of my complaints, and please put in the comments if you work with oil paints or any kind of paints and you deal with this, is that I ended up with so much lint and hair in this painting. And like a lot of paintings, you can really only tell if you're looking super, super up close. But I have a feeling the original culprit was this little makeup brush. I knew the brush was clean when I started using it, but it's still a fairly old brush and I didn't like make sure there was no like loose hairs in it or anything and so i think that this brush was transferring little pieces of lint and things into my painting and then when i put the gloss varnish on it you can see them defined because they catch the light more than you could before so again if i'm sitting three feet away from the painting i can't see it but it is one of those things that is uh, imperfection that has kind of been bugging me a little bit and something that i want to be careful about 
I also own a cat, and so sometimes, uh, you know, little flecks of cat hair I have to <laughs> deal with working around, um, although my cat isn't really allowed in my studio, and that is one of the reasons. I wanted to share this process with you all because I think as a beginner, not a beginner to painting, but a um, fairly new to oil paints, there is a lot that we can learn from our mistakes. And um, I think it can be very educational to watch the masters. And I also think it can be very educational to watch the people who are making the mistakes that you may be making when you start. Um, this is a quick clip taken from my balcony in the sunlight of that varnish. Uh, you can't really see the little hairs I'm talking about, but I do think that it's really, really pretty. And I am really happy with the way it came out. I missed the varnish right there on the edge. As you can see, there is a, a non-glossy edge, which bugs me a little bit, but like I said, beginners and the things that we learn. We have to make these mistakes. If you are starting projects like this, do not expect it to be perfect the first time. Give yourself patience, give yourself grace, be proud of the work you're doing. Don't be afraid to look things up, to follow tutorials. All of that stuff is just a part of the process. I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments what else you guys are interested in seeing or learning. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.